Did I tell you that I went back to download another video and it wouldn't let me again? Nope. I got two done, but it wouldn't let me do another one. Got your Bluetooth off on there? I don't know. Check it. I'm doing it. You're getting bossy. Is that because you're about to retire? Trying to get things done. Are you getting bossy because you're about to retire? No. Nope. We're being silly, y'all. Just being silly. Silly, silly, silly. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my soul. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. I'm going to have to shut down because it's not connecting. Well, can they hear us anyway? We'll be right back. Okay. All right, everybody hear us? Let us know. Hello. It's a silly evening. It's good. It's silly. We are almost halfway through with the book and almost halfway through with Revelation. Almost halfway through with the book and almost halfway through with Hey Wanda, hey Courtney. <laughs> Hey, Cece. Okay. Hey, Carol. Hey, Courtney. I said Courtney. I'm sorry I'm saying hello to everybody. And, um, my vision's off this evening, so if I stammer and read through the words, I, I have problems with my right eye. It is... Is it uh, sparkling? It's everything tonight. It's sparkling. I got floaters. I got two things that looks like looking through a Star Wars mass like this as, as I look. So I have, you may tell me do that to read. So we'll just And we have grandchildren in the other room. So if we have little pitter patter of big feet running through here, it's the grandkids. Because yep. they have big feet. Some of them do. They're gonna build a big puppy dog. And it hit eighty degrees today, I think. Yep. Alabama. All right. <coughs> We're in Excuse me, we're in Revelation 10, so go ahead and find out. We're going to open in prayer. Father, we'll come before you this evening, thanking you for your word. We ask, Lord, your, that you would anoint it and bless it. Give us the Holy Spirit tonight, Lord, to understand it. We thank you for helping us to to grow and to more like, be more like Christ. And I thank you, Father, for healing of my eye this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, right, Leticia. La last week we skipped through. This week we got a short chapter, so hopefully we can do a little more dialogue. Um, we we left with the, uh, let's just glance over Revelation 9. We had the um, fifth angel of the six angels. We had the fifth angel. We are, as we mentioned before, Revelation is 1 through 11, um, and then it starts again at chapter 12 on up to about 19 is the tribulation again. So chapter 10 is going to be near the end of the tribulation. So just keep that in mind time-wise as we're looking at this. Um, Angie's got some uh, companion scriptures that she can share with you that we uh, look back some of them are in their Old Testament. <clears throat> I put them on a sheet there for you. And some of those we'll be reading. Um, so, <clears throat> before I begin, let me uh, rem remind everybody that Jesus had, I, I think the term is pre-incarnate um, appearances in the Old Testament. Uh, but he also has, I could guess I could say, post-incarnate appearances in Revelation. He appears all through Revelation in some form or another. We um, have clarified that he's not the person on the white horse. That is the that is the uh, spirit of deception coming yeah. in. But some of these that places that say that it was an angel 
the angel of the Lord is Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. And um, in Jack Van Impey's book, he uh, uses the technical term for that. And if I can see it, I will tell you what those are. But um, anyway, um, he, uh, if you'd read um, Revelation 10, verse 1. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. Okay. So these first three verses on here have to do with that. So if you want to okay. uh, post oh, all the okay. way down to Revelation 10.1, okay. we've got some scriptures that she's going to share with you. And we're going to use this to look at because this first verse talks about a mighty angel coming down from heaven. And this is Jesus. And we're going to look at how we can tell this is Jesus. Um, he's a mighty angel listed as mighty angel. Uh, when John saw him, he uh, sometimes did not recognize that it was Jesus. But we can look back through scripture and see that it's Jesus. <clears throat> he he was um, came down from heaven clothed with a cloud and a rainbow was upon his head. So the rainbow um, is a sign of God's covenant and the cloud, it, Jesus is coming with a cloud as we're going to see just a minute, coming in, in a cloud with glory. <clears throat> and I've never connected that myself up until I read this book that Jesus appears with a cloud and if you'll remember when the um the mount transfiguration a cloud came down when jesus was there uh the cloud came down on uh, mount sinai when moses was there and a thick cloud came down the cloud came down in the tabernacle did i miss you saying that was the holy spirit it is but it's uh jesus coming in a cloud is is um the sign and uh, also his face were, was, as it were, the sun and his feet as pillars of fire. So this is obviously a dramatic appearance of Jesus. Um, you know, he is the ancient of days. He's not the baby in the manger anymore. He's, Amen. You know, he is he's the ancient of days. He is the creator. He's the one that yeah. John 1, 1 said that by him all things were created. So he is, mm -hmm. God spoke it and Jesus performed it, right? Um, and if you'd read uh, Revelation 1, 7. Behold, he cometh with clouds and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Okay, so. But Amen. We have read that in our beginning of the study of Revelation. We read that Jesus was coming with clouds. Amen. Right. And when I read that, you don't connect the clouds. Sometimes gospel songs will sing that he's coming in the clouds. Right. Right. Stepping up to the clouds, and it's just that in your in your mind you see Jesus coming to the stratosphere, not coming to earth in the clouds. Right. But when you recognize that he's coming in a cloud with clouds around him, that's the image. Then you look at this Re uh, Revelation 10:1, and I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven clothed with a cloud. It, it, it's a little more clear, isn't it, when you say it that so way? So what, what is the significance? I mean, I always, I won't get into why I think of clouds as the Holy Spirit, but why, why? That why? I don't know. Why? That I don't know. I don't know why he is in a cloud, uh, unless that's just his Shekinah glory around him. I think that's right. The Shekinah glory. Right. <gasps> I'm gonna write that down. Okay. Um. Oh, here's the <coughs> here's the terms for all you Bible doctrine people. I he, Van Impe says I believe that such Theophanies and Christophanies were appearances of Christ throughout the Old Testament. So it's Theophanies and Christophanies. Those were people? No, that is the what they call the doctrinal appearance of Christ uh, post, uh, pre. So Theophanies is before he was born on the earth. 
and Christophanes is after he died. Well, this says through the Old Testament. So I mean, we can look up the words. I didn't, but, um, and it says, and I didn't write this down. Isaiah 63, 9, in the, all their affliction, he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them in his love and in his pity. He redeemed them and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. Mm -hmm. um, on three occasions, we've observed this angelic messenger in action in Revelation 7, verses 2 and 3, if you'd read that. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the tree, so they have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. He says this is the prophet role of Jesus. Uh, Does that look like that, that scripture? Can you see where there's a prophet in there? This is Revelation mm -hmm. 7, 2 and 3. Yeah. Okay. And then he was he appears in Revelation 8, 5. Read that one. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it onto the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Okay, that was Jesus appearing again. But it says, and the angel took the censer. And that one is the priest. And the priest would take the censer with the incense, mm -hmm. I see. So do you, can you guess what this third one is going to be in Revelation 10, 1? Well, I know because I looked at it. Can y'all guess? <laughs> and it is the king. It is the king. Jesus is prophet, priest, and king. And so those are the three appearances that he has in Revelation. Revelation 7, 2, and 3 is the prophet. Revelation 8, 5, he's the priest. And Revelation 10, 1, he's the king. <clears throat> a mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, and a rainbow was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet were as pillars of fire. Um, so what do the attributes signify? First, Christ and his deity is usually surrounded by a cloud. Clouds and darkness are around him. Did I have said Psalm? Okay, I didn't put this one down. Psalms 97, 2. Clouds and darkness are around about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. That's in Psalms. Talks about clouds and darkness being, being around him. Um, second, God made a covenant with Noah and putting the rainbow up. So Jesus is the only one that could wear the rainbow. Not, now, he's reading out of the Revelation Revealed yes. book. So if y'all have yes. got the book, he's on page 117. Yes. And third, Christ is often pictured as one who has a shining face as under the sun. Saul of Tarsus on the road to Damascus. Yes. Jesus, the bright light, right? Yes. So here he is that. So these are all proofs that this is Jesus. It's, but, Does that but, make sense to yes, everybody? Yes, but this is it's saying the angel, an angel, another angel. So. Yeah, and in the beginning, remember when we was doing the seven churches of Revelation, you know, the, there was an angel in the midst of the candlesticks. Yes. That was Jesus. Yes. Right. But Jesus is not he's technically not an, angel. an angel. No, he's That's not. That's just the way that he's was, referred. Well, angel just means messenger. Right. Right. So John was just seeing this vision that there was a messenger there. Do you think John didn't recognize him as Jesus? Right. Because, yeah, because... Because John never saw... No, John saw Jesus. Yeah, John was the beloved. I don't know why I was thinking yeah, John, of Paul. Yeah. John saw him in his earthly body. So John is not seeing, recognizing him as Jesus John's at this just, point. And they got, he was told, write what you see, right? So John is writing exactly what he sees. He's not interpreting it for us. He is writing it word for word. And we're see, going to see that is so important, though. Because we assume, because we interpret it, that everybody in the Bible is interpreting it, and so they could be wrong. Well, in just a minute, I think I've made my notes where we're going to see that the prophets of old was not, they, were, they didn't know what they were writing when they wrote the prophecies about, think about it, Psalms, uh, 22 has uh, a prophecy about Jesus hanging on the cross, and he says, "I looked down, and I and my bones were showing, and my my tongue stuck to the roof of my mouth, and the dogs are circling around about me." And that's Jesus on the cross. Well, how would 
the writer of Psalms 22, right. have understood that. Right. So the prophets of old, and I think I've written the scripture down, is they they sought out after what this means, the prophecy. Um, <coughs> there, the things about um, e each of the prophets shares a, a facet of the diamond, but they don't have the full understanding right. of it because that's that you put it all together, and that's why Israel missed it because they didn't put all these prophecies together, and they're still not. Still not. And so we're about to see oh, that Jesus fulfilled all these prophecies and he is going to make, be, um, make it clear. All the, Even the Old Testament prophecies, when you read about in Joel, I don't know which of these, I, um, some of these prophecies like Habakkuk and, and the minor prophets, they are things about Jesus in tribulation, in the remnant, right, right in this, this book. And when you look at it, you we can see that. We're in a place in history where we can see that. They had no idea. They gave the prophecy as God gave it to them. They uttered, they wrote it. And then they pondered it, thinking, what could that mean? When is this going to happen, right? Wow. And so when you read um, Old Testament minor prophets and some even some like Isaiah, the major prophets, when you read those writings, don't assume that man knew what, he was writing. Don't assume that he had the big picture. Daniel, when he wrote the 70 weeks, he wrote down exactly what God said, but he didn't have a clue. Right. Right? Right. When, when God reveals those kind of prophecies, it doesn't mean that the prophet understands it. In fact, I would say the other. I would say that the prophet doesn't have a clue. If we, we as humans, if we give prophecy and we, like, okay, let's just, let's just sidestep a little bit. If I'm in a church and I know that um, John and Sue are having, John's having an affair, John and Sue are married, then he's having an affair, and I start, you know, acting all spiritual, and I start saying, John, and I, I just think, you know, that God a knows. A word of knowledge. A word, right. And I start bringing them up. And I do, well, that's bringing glory to me because I have just acted like I just received yeah. this, even yeah. though I might got a phone call that afternoon that mm -hmm. John's having an affair. Or, right. But... But people do that, and they try to they try to toot their own horn. But I believe that true prophets don't have a clue what they're giving. That is really good point. That's this is my opinion. This is Paul. Speaking. I like Paul's opinion. Okay, and I don't know how all of you feel about it, but when these prophecies are written, when John, this massive thing, this is a lot. Mm -hmm. This is not a he will be born of a virgin and ride a donkey into. Jerusalem, he would be born in Bethlehem. Well, Bethlehem? That doesn't make sense. Yeah. But that's what God told me to write. I don't think they understood that. And I think that's the reason is I, that it's hidden from them, even the prophet. <coughs> and um, my opinion is it's so they don't get the glory of it. Well, and you know, I always wondered because the prophets and the priests and all of that to me they knew all of the prophecies they had already read them studying them so how in the world could they not recognize when jesus came how he was fulfilling all of that right. but they were blinded yeah god they, did not want them like putting paul that says together. now we see through a glass darkly yeah but then face to face when when we get and that's what i said about revelation We'll, we can speculate on all these prophecies. We can speculate on what's going to be going on in the earth, what countries are going to be attacking Israel, where all this, you know, 200 million man army is going to be, all this stuff. We can speculate all that. We can say, well, scientifically, only China could have that many people. All, we can put all, we can plug in that. But until it happens, we won't be right. That's right. And we'll be standing on there going, Oh, oh, yes. I see now. There's going to be a lot of I head gotcha. slapping because yeah. I get it now, right? Yeah. And so. And how many times in our life do we do that with God? All the time. We box yeah. him in and say, well, this is what that means, mm -hmm. or this is what God wants. That is deadly words right yeah, there when you say, this is what God Thus wants. Thus saith the Lord. <sighs> That's dangerous. Okay, so we've got. Oh, we got that was verse hey, one. Hey, Yoshana and Charlene said, I think you're right. Never thought of it that way. Yes. I bet that was about the Shekinah glory, right? Mm -hmm. um, 
And Courtney said that makes complete sense, Paul. Good. Well, I mean, you don't have to agree with me if you know if you have a different opinion. This, this, and I, but I do firmly believe, as long as I've listened to to prophecy teachers, end times teachers, um, people who call themselves a prophet, it, you know, if a prophet fails in one prophecy, they're a false prophet. So people that, and I see people listed on the internet as, you know, the prophet, so-and-so. That that person is putting themselves in a dangerous area. Yeah. Because if you miss one, you're a false prophet. Yeah, but they don't believe that. Oh, God, you know, God gives you a little bit of a grades on the curve. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Oh, mercy. He does well, not grade on a curve. Uh so we'll move on to verse two unless somebody's got a <laughs> verse two. <laughs> oh, that was verse one. Verse two. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea and his left foot on the earth. That is an awesome picture. But he's got a little book. A little book. I like little, a little books. Book. Now Angie likes to collect miniatures. She's got I little do. books. A little book. She does doll collecting. She does miniature collecting. And she's got some tiny little books. And I have a tiny little Bible. It's like it's like that big. Yeah. And it's got scripture in it. Yeah. So here. This is a, bigger, a little <clears throat> bit bigger. Than we'll that. say this is Jesus. He's standing one foot on the sea, one foot on the earth. He's got a little book. Um, and Van Ampey says, This verse pictures Christ preparing to take control of the earth and see which have always been rightfully his. He created them, for all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made, John 1, 3. So Jesus is coming back to take the earth, yes. to, to, to take control of it. Because when you say, well, why did, if God's a loving God, why, are there, why is there such evil? Because the deed to the earth is been, was stolen when Adam and Eve fell. They, mm. It was stolen. It was taken away. They gave away the deed to the earth to the enemy, Satan. Jesus is coming back. He's conquered death, right? Yes. He's conquered death, but now he's coming back. And that's why there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Amen. Right? When you move into somebody's, if you have to move into somebody's house and they didn't leave it very clean, you could build a new house. And, that's right. right? So, um... You were out there splitting firewood, and yeah. you've got, you got firewood on. stuff. Okay. Uh, Carol said, Elizabeth. Carol said, sometimes when we think something makes sense to us in our own understanding, later on in heaven, we'll really get it. Yes, it depends on how much the Lord wants an individual to understand. Yeah. Exactly. When he opens our eyes, removes the blinders, we can see. Mm -hmm. It's just that a lot of us think we're seeing when we're really not. We're still walking around with blinders on. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. and, and some of us will have, some things we'll each have right and we'll say, I knew that. I knew it. I told you so. <laughs> I told <Right>? you so. <laughs> uh. Verse 3. And cried with a loud voice as when a lion roareth. And when he had cried, seven thunders uttered their voices. Okay, and in Hosea 11, 10. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud and a rainbow. Oh, wrong one. Sorry. Hosea 11, 10. Mm -hmm. They shall walk after the Lord. He shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. Now let's look at that again. This was this was aside from Re, uh, Revelation. This is Hosea eleven ten. They shall walk after the Lord. He he shall roar like a lion. When he shall roar, then the children shall tremble from the west. We just read in Revelation that this quote unquote angel, this messenger, cried with a loud voice as when a lion roared. It, does it not all tie in together it when you do that? It absolutely does. But how did Ho who who did Hosea think that he was writing that about? Why? Did, what was the connection? He did. He had no clue what this was about, mm -hmm. and yet 
what he wrote was absolutely spot on talking yeah. about Jesus. Yeah. yeah. The Messiah. He might have understood that it had to do with Messiah, but he wouldn't have known the context. Right? Right. Jesus never, as far as we know, roared like a lion while he walked this earth. He never, I mean, the loudest he probably ever got is when he turned over the tables in, in the temple, right? Okay, so can I, uh, let me backtrack. Sure. Okay, so this is, at what point in the story is this happening? This is toward the end of the tribulation. tribulation. We've toward already had. Toward the end of the seven years, toward the end of the first half of the seven years. No, toward the end of the seven years. Toward the end of the whole deal. <coughs> yes. He's now, he's now officially, you know, the rapture, he doesn't touch down on the earth. That's right. But this is the second coming where he actually touches his yes, foot down. Yes, that's a good point. That's a good the point. The official he is not, second coming, he has touched his foot down on the earth. So he is point. now there. He is opening his mouth. And the sound is so yes. powerful. There's seven thunders. That, it that, shakes yes. everything. Yes. It makes you think of a... Um, the, what is it when the airplanes go so fast? A sonic boom. boom. A sonic boom. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah, that, that's true. It might have been such an awesome thing around the globe that it was a supersonic splitting the air, sonic wow. boom all over. Oh, I just got shivers splitting the air. Wow. Um, and, and we're going to see in just a minute a scripture that will confirm that this is the end of seven years, the end okay. of the seven years, okay? In this chapter. So stay tuned. Um, and then also Joel 3.16. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. Amen. No. I've read these kind of things in the Old Testament before, but until you tie them in a in a parallel study, mm -hmm. Revelation and Joel, that's passage. Until you tie these two verses right. together, Joel makes no sense. I agree. You see what I, I mean? Absolutely there are agree. so many prophecies in the Old Testament that we say, oh well that that took place when Jesus whatever, you know, when it or when this happened. That took place at the tabernacle or but you really don't know. But here, when you look at Revelation, it's, it's going clear. to happen. Yeah. Elizabeth said, I wonder if the earth will quake when he puts his foot down. Wow, that's a good question. How could it not? Yes. It will have to, right? Because right. it will be bearing God himself. <gasps> wow. Well. You're a grandbaby. Because mm, 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 mm. so, it says, so as a lion roars. So we yeah. saw that he the coming with clouds, not in the clouds, coming with clouds. And he's also he has a voice like a lion that roars. Mm -hmm. The same thing that Joel said. The same thing that Hosea said. Courtney says, "Wow." And wow, that is. That is proof of who he is. He was prophesied about. Okay, now isn't there somewhere that says he puts his foot down on the Mount of Olives and the earth splits open? I have heard people say that, so maybe we'll get to that in Revelation. Maybe that's in Revelation. Okay. <clears throat> so the earth will shake. So that's yes. an earthquake. Yes. It's an earth shake. Uh, verse 4. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. It was a mystery. And the mystery is, and, and, uh, and I got to thinking about this. When this indicates to me that he wrote every other thing down. Yes. He didn't leave anything out. We have we don't have to worry about was well, there some detail he doesn't remember. This is something he was told not to write. So that is a pretty um sure thing that to me that he was 
writing and doing, being completely obedient to God. Now, all these prophets, the, the word of God is without error. Yes. All these prophets wrote exactly, they didn't understand it, they wrote it, but when he's writing this, he heard something that we're not supposed to know. So what do you think are the thunders? Are they, are they like beings? Are they, what are they? Because they can speak. Yeah, I think that they could be other angels. Well, you know, like I'm talking about the hmm. elders and all of that sitting around. Is that, do you think the thunders are maybe in seven elders? No, I, I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't think we, but whatever he heard was information that we were not meant to know. I don't know why he, well. <laughs> well, it was happening. <clears throat> it was happening and God let him see it exactly Yeah. from God's has a heavenly point of view, right? This that that was his vantage point. What do you think point. it was? I think it was something that if it had been printed in Revelation, it would have been something so obvious that people would have. Um, you know, there's there's some things that are hidden from people because God said some things. Some things because you're not believing that the information will be hidden from you. Not the other way around. Not, I'm hiding information because I don't want you to believe, but because you're not a believing person of faith, you will be blinded and you won't have this information. Well, I think this was the kind of information that some people would have heard. It's, it's sort of like, see so if I can explain this, in, in the Garden of Eden, God said to put a protection and flaming sword around the tree of life mm -hmm. because they already ate the tree of knowledge and good and evil right and that caused their spiritual death right. because they now they knew good and evil but the tree of life was also there and the tree of life that they had been eating from was what was causing them to live forever right but someday we will eat of that tree it's in heaven right oh i know right? i know so what a so with that that kind of thing, um, he said, lest they eat of the tree of life. This is in Genesis. Lest they eat of the tree of life and live forever, basically in their sin. Yes. Right? Because yes. then they would live, they would be for eternal sinners. Right? They would never have the opportunity because they're eternal. Now we have now, we are born again in, into the spirit and the kingdom of God. But we're not fully uh, there with him until we die. We have right. to die first. Right. But if we had eaten of that, or if they had eaten of that, then they would be eternal, not dying in this body, but they would never be able to get to heaven. Right? Does that make right. sense? Yeah. Elizabeth said, what we need to know, we will know. That's right. Yes. Um, and Carol said, question more words of God's wrath. Maybe it was something so horrendous. That was about to happen. I don't know. Yeah, and toward um toward the end of the seven years, maybe the seven thunders were um, indications of seven nuclear bombs going off, and that you know what I mean. Yeah, it could be he anything, could have, but that is yeah, wow. He could have witnessed that, and then God told him not to write it. Yeah, and Elizabeth said the Israelites could only hear thunder when God spoke back in Exodus. So maybe John could hear what was said, but mm. the people on earth could hear the thunder and not know. Yeah, that's that's a good point. That's a good point, Elizabeth. Oh, it gives me chill bumps. Does that give y'all chill bumps? Okay, um, verses five and six. And the angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth lifted up his hand to heaven and swear by him that liveth forever and ever who created heaven and the things that are therein are and the earth and the things that therein are and the sea and the things which are therein that there should be time no longer. Okay, so here we have another phrasing that 
has been carried down from the original Greek in Revelation. And we've got lots of translations I'm sure everybody's using. So the the meaning of time no longer. So, you know, I can I can say, okay, I'm I'm retiring in two weeks. There's going to be time no longer, right? I don't have to worry about Mondays or Wednesdays and Thursdays. I don't care what day of the week it is. I had a friend that told me that when you're retired, every day is Saturday except Sunday, right? Yeah. And so you don't worry about it. And so I could have said that. I could have said there's time no longer. I could have used it that way. But that's not what this means. I could have said this means we're not going to worry about day and night and all that. And that, that's a, kind of a logical explanation of this. But he's, but if you look at the context, he said he, he stood on the sea and on the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, who created heaven and the things that are in and the earth and the things that are there, therein are, and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. Okay? And what this means is no more waiting period. Oh, so he didn't call an end to time itself. Right. He just said, "That's it. Time's up. Time's up. That's a good time oh, is up. Oh, 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 oh. Because all through the seven years, God is trying to get people to listen. Because we read chapter two back, where all the plagues happened, all the people died, all the meteors falling, all the." Um, pop the problems on the earth and then it said but they still refuse to repent right time, so he is uh, this seven years he has given people time to come to him and then he says no more okay I can't handle this this but is incredible it is incredible but that's another that's is a, this is a good indication that this is at the se end of the end seven of years, the seven right? years. Well, you know that when Noah was building in the ark and he said, I will not contend with man. Right. He said 120 years. 120 years. And then. It was over. Right. We don't, we don't like to think about God that way. He's a loving God. He's merciful. You know, we like to think about mommy and daddy being that way that dad, mommy loves me. She would never spank me. And then, you know, Right, mommy comes out and says, with that spoon, and says, that's it. <laughs> yeah, right? Time's up. Time. Is, that's right. No Ooh. more. The, and the end of this. And when you see how humans treat each other, when you see the wars, when you see the evil that, that men and women have done to each other, when you see, when you read about it in the news, and you say, how long, God, how long? This is it. This is where he says, there should be time no longer. Time is up. Somebody has got Do you another. Think the people on the earth will hear him say that. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, the thunderings are going on. Yeah. And if it's as as magnificent as I imagine, I would think every human on earth would stop whatever they're doing. Mm. And then do they hear the voice of of God mm -hmm. saying, "Time's up. We're, you're done. It's over." Time is up. That's a good a good way to interpret that phrase. Time is up. There would be time no longer. And that does time <coughs> no longer does not sound. It almost sounds gentle, doesn't it? There will be time no longer. Don't worry yeah, about your watch. Yeah, because I was thinking of it totally <clears throat> differently. I was thinking, okay, we will not count time any further. We're stepping into eternity, which, in fact, yeah. is at this moment. Yes. We are we are leaving humanity's lifespan and uh -huh. stepping into eternity. So you could think and you know stretch out your thoughts and say, does that mean you know we we measure time by the world spinning and going around the sun and all that? Does that mean that the world won't be there or we won't be on the world? Does that mean? But it's it literally means no more waiting. Wow. And you know the. Did y'all uh, know <clears> that? Am I the only one? If who anybody didn't else has got another that? translation besides King Beyond James, time. that's what we're um, reading from. Harold said in a uh, New American Standard word is delay no longer. Yeah, the judgment's coming. The judgment's now. It's here. We're done. Yeah.
Okay. That just that blew me away. Okay. And, and that is that is something that we 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 know that God is merciful, and His mercy endures forever. And this is the mercy that He's had on other. You know, He's given mercy is giving somebody another chance, right? It's not. It's not just overlooking stuff. It is giving somebody another chance to repent, to turn back. That's mercy. And um, <clears throat> it, it is really, um, we've read so, several things like this in Revelation that should grab our attention, right? Do we have a problem? <laughs> no, she just didn't want to be in that room. Okay, I don't We can keep her. going. Uh, did you read Wanda's comment? No, I can't see that. I've known Paul for 42 years, and I'm still amazed how God uses him to reveal God's truth to others. This is totally amazing. Good old. Yeah. And Yoshana know, said, it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a loving God. Yes. Know that our judgment day is nigh. No Nah, time, no more, no more delay. Amen. Been thinking about heaven a lot this week. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, I mean, I have to admit, almost every day when I read the news, I cringe at some of the things, the stories that we had, you know, we've had horrible things of children and, oh yeah, you know, and, oh, and yeah. it, I grip my teeth and say, God, how much longer? Will this go on? And this is it. That's it, says God. This is. We're done. We're done. Or I'm done. You know, it's like it's like uh, Mark uh, Lowry when he told the story about Mama had enough. Mama right? done had him enough. And his, him and his brother fighting and knocking over That's lamps right. and all that. And Mama kept saying, "You boys cut it out." And then the shot, Mama came in there and with a, something and said, "Mama had had enough." And you know. God, God's going to have a place in time where he says that is it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, verse 7. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. So the seventh angel does not sound here, but rather in Revelation eleven fifteen. 15. So, but he's just talking about in the day when he sounds. Um, I don't think I wrote these down. Uh, at that time, the earth shall be full of knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea, 11, Isaiah 11, 9. And did I write First Peter down? I should have written these down. First Peter 1, 10 um, talks about, let me go there, First Peter 1, 10. First Peter 1, 10. Okay, so we start with verse 9. 1 Peter 1, 9 and 10. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. They searched for the answer to this. Yes. Right? Yes. They didn't understand it when they prophesied about it. And that's what this scripture is what I was talking about, <clears throat> in that those prophets... Have, did not live long enough to see Messiah. They did not understand what Messiah was about. In fact, if you think about all the disciples running on the night of the crucifixion, mm -hmm. they didn't get it either. No, they, they didn't. They had walked with him for three three. And you know three. he had to have had more conversations than what they wrote down. Yes, and, and they didn't understand because they ran. Otherwise, yeah. if they had seen the full plan, if they had really understood it, they would not have run. They would have said, nothing is going to take me away. He's got to hang on that cross for the right. sins of mankind. Right. But they they just saw it. And, and you know, there was um, <clears throat> Simon the Zealot. The Zealots were a military-type group that were wanted to overthrow the Roman government, right? right? And they believed Messiah would be a military leader. Yes. And that's yes. why the Pharisees did not think he was Messiah. <clears throat> but he's about to be a military type leader. He's about to come in. 
He's not going to take sides. He's going to take over, right? Do you think, do you think up in heaven, do you think we will hear and see all of this? Or do you think we will be, like I said, at the marriage feast and we're just occupied with worship? And Or do you think we, at this point, those who have raptured are in heaven, will we start seeing these things? My thought is that we will because John was in a position of heaven when he saw this. Yeah. I think he was taken forward in time to stand wherever he stood, right, and view everything. And as we go past chapter 12, from 12 to about 19 in Revelation, talks about more detail about the countries and the leaders and all that during this time. Up till yeah. now, we've seen the heavenly side. Yeah. And we're about to look down, repeat it, seven years repeated. But now we're going to look in more detail. It's, right. it's kind of like when somebody's giving an overview and they give the bullet points of something. Then they come back and they have a slide on each one and right. they broaden it out. That's what that's the way Revelation's written. Yeah. It's written with the, the overview up to chapter 11 and chapter 12 to about 19 a lot more detail right so that to me is um, going to be a very interesting thing to continue through it it, it when you understand that it's it, you remember in um, the beginning of our revelation study when we looked at Matthew 24 and we had the plagues and we had the same thing Jesus said and we had you know, this and the same thing Jesus said and right. this and Jesus in chap in Matthew twenty four was identical in order right. to all these things in Revelation. Well, Revelation twelve to nineteen is going to be repeated and we're going to be able to overlay that. Right? Wow. Of the of the seven trumpets and the seven um what was there? Seven trumpets and I can't think the other seven things. Seals. Yes, the seven, seven seals. seals. We're going to go back and see that. And when we get through, we're going to be really, we think we're saying wow now. We think we're going to be really blown away with all this. I'm going to have to wear my sweater <coughs> next time. <coughs> okay. Uh, we're at verse 8. Verse 8. Okay, wait, I have to read. Um, as we study Revelation as believers, God is telling us basically that which is coming. Our faith and trust in him must be even more solidified. Our telling of him to the lost is even more important. Praise God forever and ever. Amen. And Elizabeth said, I know the scripture says that there will be no more tears in heaven. So if we are to look down and see these things, I believe that we will see through new eyes of understanding we will have our new bodies i agree because if we look down and see what they're going through on earth in this view yes we would be devastated we would be overwhelmed with grief right. so it's obvious that we will have such new revelation revelation yeah okay yeah. uh and if you would read eight through ten and the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again and said, Go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it and eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. Okay, so we have another mysterious sounding thing. So the 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 words that's in the little book that he ate was the word of God. Okay? Right. Because... Um, Wait, wait, wait. Jeremiah fifteen sixteen. she shared this with you. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. Psalm 119, 103, she shared with you. 
How sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. So we already have a Old Testament reference to this, that right. the words are sweet. But, it's but why also, is it bitter in the belly? That's a good good point. So the belly is, is where it's after the fact. And after the fact is we get the full revelation of it. Yes. Right? Yes. So the full revelation is that God is a loving God, but he's also a God of justice. Right? And nobody, well, that's wrong. That's wrong. A lot of folks don't want to see that God is a God of justice. Right. They want God to be the sweet God, the forgiving, but part of the forgiving is to still hold accountability. Yes. So that is the bitter in the belly. If we believe that someday in heaven everybody's just going to make it and that Adolf Hitler, just a name person, Adolf Hitler is going to be right up there with us because after all, God's mm -hmm. God of mercy. And he says, yeah, come on in, Adolf. Then it, it just does away with all that Jesus did for us. Yes. Why did he die on the cross? There was a reason. That's right. Right? That's right. And all the, all the parables that Jesus gave about the father, the, the man giving a banquet for his son and sending out messengers and the people and the people kill the messengers. That was the prophets. Right. Then he said, finally, I will send my son down there and they will come to the banquet. They'll listen to my son. And it says they killed the son. Yes. Because that was what Jesus was about to have happen. Yes. And then he says that the judgment would take place. Yes. Right. So. And, and, that's what, you know, if I could hire a billboard and put it up there. Love isn't making excuses. Love is making accountable yeah. so that they, that people can become stronger. We have an entire society of people giving excuse after excuse after excuse, and there's no strength in them. Right. It's a sad, tragic thing. There's nothing sweet about that. That's right. This is sweet. Yes, it is. Um, and um, and the, and the other thing about the bitterness is you get it's like the full revelation of the thing that you ate. Now, when you when you eat food, you do taste the initial the taste of it, but your stomach receives that. Mm -hmm. It can settle on your stomach and and have good effect. You can make you feel good and warm and fuzzy and you know after you've eaten thanksgiving meal yeah. or it can it can you can eat it but after that it can make you yeah right and donna said i thought jesus held the book um but this says the book was taken from the angel i'm confused and it does say that it says that up here in verse eight and the voice said Go and take, take the, little the little book, book, which is open in the hand of the angel. Which he, so John was told to take the book from Jesus. And he went right. up and he told Took Jesus, it. give me the little book. And and Jesus said to him, take it and eat it up. Mm. So. So, yeah, and Jesus gave him the book. Now, why God had him see it this way, I don't know. Um, but I believe that we will. I think that it was to impress on John the seriousness of all this. This was not some bizarre thing that he was just make, pretending and in, in his own imagination, you know what I mean? Yes. This was something that that he was to take serious about. Yeah. You know, when, when Daniel saw the vision that he had, he saw the the statue with all the different parts. When he saw that, he understood that this was kingdoms. Right. But he didn't understand the that it was world a worldwide prophecy, yeah. right? Yeah. And um, I think this was maybe maybe this one thing where he had him take this book and eat it was to impress on John this prophecy cannot died you can't you have got to record it and you've got to get it out to the seven right. churches right because that's where it went it went to those seven churches right. and it it is people that try to interpret the bible and say well it's just fairy tales or there's a lot of mistakes in it or whatever you've not read about the history of the bible and how 
scribes took and what run one Hebrew or Greek character or word at a time to make it it was just like photocopied across. Mm -hmm. They went this way, they went le right to left. But they they took it that serious. And mm -hmm. the, this was a revelation mm -hmm. that God said, take it serious. All the world is involved right. in this. Consume it. Yes. Consume it. That's a good yeah. that's a good way to look at it. <clears throat> yes. Thank you for that, Paul. Adolf Hitler reference. I agree. And Donna said, gotcha. Good, good, good. Um, but see, Donna, I appreciate you saying things like that because, because and I'm that way with Paul, too. If he says something and I'm not registering exactly how he's meaning, I ask him because I don't want to I don't want to get through with this Bible study with more questions than answers. Yeah. I won't have unless it's something that provokes me like to dig and study more. Yeah. Because it is confusing at times. And and that is a good point that why, you know, why why did he have hear the voices of seven thunders and not write it? Why did he take the book and eat it? Yeah. And uh Jack Van Empey says, as John learns of the remaining judgment still to be released, the word becomes bitter in his digestive tract. So he, I mean, after all he's seen, there's more. Well, the, evidently there's seven things that are so powerful that even he is not allowed to share. Yeah. yeah. Carol said, "Scripture uphold Scripture as we go through Old Testament, New Testament, as you're citing other scriptures." Amen. And Yoshana said, "Do y'all think that John eating the little book helped him?" to remember mm. to write it later. And wow, maybe that's, that's also point. why it's so bitter in the belly. Wow, that is Imagine writing all this out. That is a very good point, Yoshana. Very good. It sounds like he's being dictated to, or he's it's like somebody taking notes in a Dictation, meeting. Because yeah. it says he but he started to write, and then God said, don't write this. And if you've and ever... seal it. I've been in meetings as a secretary where I was literally typing on a computer mm -hmm. everything that was being said mm -hmm. and and <laughs> that's not easy to do trying yeah. to keep up with so many people and things that are being said and yeah. i was sitting there tapping yeah. tapping Imagine. and you know then you get somewhere and you realize uh okay that can't go in and so you have to back up and i'm thinking when it, when i read that part i think of him writing and he's writing and writing and sometimes when you're doing that it's not even registering what's being said. You just become robotic writing. Maybe that was why there was silence in heaven for an hour. It gave him time to catch, catch up. up. <laughs> but you're right. I mean, maybe him having to eat it. Yeah. 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 That, thank you for saying that. That, that. that could be very mm -hmm. much it. Yeah. Uh, verse 11 finishes okay. out the chapter. Verse 11. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. Of course, this book of Revelation is well known even among atheists. Yeah. Right? I mean, rock bands use the 666 emblem, and it comes from this. Uh, the world knows what that means. So this Revelation book, Prophecy, is heard about by other people that are not born again, right? Mm -hmm. <coughs> so there's still seven bowls or vials in judgment. There were seven trumpets, seven seals, seven seals first, seven trumpets, and then there's going to be seven bowls or vials. And the bowls are things, you know, that hold liquid or whatever, right. if you want to view it that way. Um, okay. That finishes chapter 10. We're going to go to chapter 11, Lord willing, next week. We missed last week because I had I just had such a busy day. I thought when you got retired, it was supposed to be less You're busy. You're almost there, baby. I know, but like getting there, I thought it would be kind of less busy, less busy, less busy. But it didn't happen last week. So um, He has a very busy job. Yes. Um, order this book from Amazon, Know Your Bible, all 66 books, large print, my favorite. You know, Roger, I think we had that book at one time. Seems like we did. Know Your Bible? Uh -huh. I think we did. Mm -hmm. This is Charlotte. Charlotte. Oh, twist around. Uh, 
This is Charlotte, and she was sleepy, and she was tired of being in the bedroom with the boys. Can you say hello? Hello. <laughs> Good study. Are you waving? Wave. Mommy might be watching. Can you say hey to Mommy? Yeah. On there? Say hey, Mom. Nope. Honey, this was really good study. Well, in this chapter, you know, this is another one of those para, not para, paraphrase, parentheses, not parentheses. Parenthetical. When you put the brackets around something in a statement, this is this is like that. But before the last trumpet, I mean, not trumpet, seal. You remember there was a pause in it. Yes. And this is the same way. We've gone through the six trumpets, and now the seventh trumpet is about to go. So, I think it's good <coughs> that this was a shorter chapter because there were so many wows in this one. I'm yeah, not sure I could handle it. And yeah, that was a lot of meat in that one. And see, even studying it, it was like I I need everybody asking and commenting and inputting it's all that's what group bible study does for you i love it you know i do love it um so i, I appreciate it i mean the folks that are listening the wisdom accumulated yes. in these folks that we exactly we know who they are and that's what right. they're adding is that's right. powerful yep so hopefully we can get through this and i would encourage everybody to go through it again after we finish the study in a few weeks let's do it again uh, go through there You'll probably go back, backtrack, and you'll see things that you didn't see before. That's always the way it is, isn't it? Yep. Hello. Hey, Mom. All right. So we're going to close. Here. Get the kids in bed. And... Bye, y'all. Um, oh, Cece, I'm so glad you joined us. Carol said the golden years, Paul. And they're all saying, hi, Charlotte. See everybody that says, hi, Miss Charlotte. Hi, sweet Charlotte. Hi, baby Charlotte. When you retire, you have to wrap things up, and that is a lot of work. Yep. Hi, Love y'all. It gives you who wrote the book and something detailed from time frame. Thank you, Roger, for, for bringing that out. Yes. We love y'all. Have a wonderful evening, and we'll hi, see hi. you Sunday. That's right. Hi. Hello. <laughs> All right. Good night, everybody.